Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, Nebraskans. First, I want Nebraskans watching to know that we are going to do everything we can do to stop LB 933, just as we have done our best to stop every anti-choice, anti-woman, anti-family, anti-science, extreme abortion restriction in this state. I can't promise what will happen. Um, I know that we will have at least three, we'll have three rounds of debate, and we will do everything that we can to make sure that this extreme abortion bill does not pass in Nebraska. Today, Christian religious extremists, let's call it what it is, are trying to pass a forced birth bill in Nebraska to cut off abortion services, including for victims of rape and incest and child abuse, with no exception for the life of the mother. With few remaining days, we're on day 54 out of 60 now, and we're debating a bill that was pulled out of committee that has no committee statement, that doesn't have a committee amendment, that circumvented the norms of our processes to get it to the floor to ban abortion in every case by any means possible, at any cost. And that's the priority of your state senators. With few remaining days and with so many important challenges still in front of us, a controversial abortion debate brought on through a poll motion, through a procedural motion that was never voted out of committee, it's going to derail the rest of the work that we must do for Nebraskans. Colleagues, it's already derailed work that we must do for Nebraskans. As soon as this trigger ban, this extreme abortion ban was dropped in the first 10 days of session, it already started taking up oxygen in the room because we knew that in Nebraska we had a good chance of seeing this come through because of the conservative nature of this body and because of the abortion bans that have passed in the past. It should worry us, colleagues, and it should worry us Nebraskans how often we have to debate human rights and dignity and how we have conceded that there's a debate to even have. The fact that my reproductive destiny, that my fertility, that my rights to control my own body, and every other woman in this chamber is even up for debate is something I can't believe we have conceded as a culture. When we talk about the rights of trans children to exist, that's not debatable. When we talk about reproductive rights and reproductive justice, that's not debatable. When we talk about marriage equality, that's not debatable. When we talk about the rights of immigrants to work and drive and go to the doctor, that's not debatable. Let people live, leave people alone, and trust people in Nebraska to do what's best for them and their families and their lives, and that we have even ceded that these questions are debatable should concern us all. The decision about whether and when to become a parent, whether and when to start a family, is one of the most important life decisions that we make. And once someone makes the decision to end a pregnancy, their care should be safe and affordable and free from punishment or judgment. Every pregnancy is different, and that's why a one-size-fits-all law a one-size-fits-all ban like LB 933 has no place in our health decisions. This bill makes it a felony, punishable for up to 20 years, for a doctor to exercise their best judgment and their training, their years of training and experience of medical best practices in the most industrialized modern nation in the entire planet, we like to say, this bill would ask doctors to not use their best judgment and put their patients in danger or else risk going to prison for up to 20 years. How can we come on the heels of that criminal justice debate, LB 920, where we enacted zero criminal justice reforms and then move directly to a bill that criminalizes the termination of a pregnancy, basically, this is going to lead us on a slippery slope to criminalizing self-managed abortion, miscarriage. There are already many states where, where people have been prosecuted and even jailed 
for having a miscarriage, this policing of our bodies is something that we should be concerned about for the direction of our culture in this country. It's about why patients need the right to consult with their doctor and their faith and their families to make the best decisions for them. And politicians do not know any better than doctors. We don't have any obstetricians in this body. We don't have any gynecologists in this body. But we have a lot of women in this body, and we have a lot of parents in this body. And I'm one of them. And I can tell you that however we feel, living a safe and healthy life is a basic right. And this should not even be something that's up for debate. When people make decisions that are best for their lives, then they, they can thrive. They can contribute to our economy, which I know is like the most important thing to talk about in politics. But for me, what it's really about is the quality of life that somebody can just have. And as long as there is violence perpetrated against people in this culture, violence that is normalized by shameful bills that we pass, like LB 933, by efforts of the introducer to do things like banning sex education, by efforts by people like the introducer to do things like reduce access to contraception. All of these things contribute to the shame that does lead to violence against women, that does lead to unwanted pregnancies. And if the proponents of this bill really cared about ending abortion, those would be the kinds of things that they would stand for. You could look to other countries in the world that have prioritized things like sex education, that have free health care, so that women who get pregnant, so people who get pregnant know that when they go to the doctor, they're going to be able to have a safe delivery, who have paid family leave, so that in those very important early years of an infant's life, the early days of its life, they can bond with their family and the parents don't have to immediately go back to work to keep churning out, you know, taxpayer money to give back to the state. It's just bizarre, the priorities that we have in this body and how disconnected they are with the reality people really face. And the reality people deserve to have that they don't have of determining their own future and how tied that is to determining their own fertility. The decision about when to become a parent has consequences for the rest of a person's life. And when that decision is taken away from them, whether by their rapist or by the government, by the state, then that person suffers. And how can we be so indifferent to the suffering of these parents, of these people who become pregnant and need a way out of it? To me, that's really part of my calling, is standing up for those people and making sure that the best life possible that they can envision for themselves is gonna be something that's accessible to them. However we feel about abortion, we should agree that once a person has decided that that's the decision they're gonna make, they shouldn't be denied an abortion just because they're poor or because of where they live or because of who they are, because we aren't in their shoes. And we should agree that the decision should always remain with them. No matter what happens in June with Roe versus Wade, I don't expect anything to change in terms of my access to abortion because I will always know how to terminate a pregnancy. One minute. I will always know what to do, who to contact, where to go, regardless of what the law is. I will always know what needs to be done to care for myself or any person who wishes to terminate a pregnancy. And there have been networks of women sharing this information for decades, for centuries, conveyed from one generation to the next, even after Roe versus Wade was decided, in part because of continued fears that abortion access would continue to be curtailed, which it has been, which are completely founded fears, and in part because people want to have um, empowerment and control over their own bodies. There's a strong desire among people to maintain control over their bodies without oversight from the law. There is no law that can take away or regulate our rights to our reproductive destiny. LB 933 will not stop abortion. It will just make abortion more dangerous and more people will die because of this procedure that is necessary and is health care. Thank you, Mr. President.